an entitled jerk demands that I give him my bike that I was riding, all because I was too short to ride it. But when I say no, this guy freaks out, demanding that I give him the bike, all while his girlfriend tries to hold him back from fighting me. And I have honestly never been more freaked out about an encounter in my life. Here's what happened. So this story takes place a couple of years ago, back when I was still in middle school. So every Sunday, I would go to the flea market in the morning with my grandfather and my cousin who was in high school at the time. We will leave the market early because there wasn't anything to buy or catch our eye, so we either went to my grandfather's house or my cousin's house to hang out. And on that day, it just so happened to be my cousin's. And so we're just hanging out. We're talking, playing video games, that sort of thing, all the way until we got bored. So we thought we would go outside and ride bikes, with my cousin having his bike in the garage. My cousin is tall and I'm shorter than him by a good bit, so the bike that I was given to use was a little bit too tall for me. So I had to do that thing where I hopped on it just to even ride it in the first place. And trust me, this fact will be important later. So we're riding around and my cousin wanted something from the store. So we started heading in that direction. He was ahead of me and he went over the median from where the store's at that has a tree and some plants on a concrete curb. He gets over just fine and went into the store. But I didn't think that I could make it without falling on accident. So I got off the bike. Not fully off the side of it, but with the rail between my legs as I'm trying and struggling to anyone who sees me to move over the curb. And I guess in this instant, this action made me a massive target to the entitled guy that was coming up. I suddenly hear over my shoulder this guy start to say to me, Hey, give me your bike. You're too short for it. Now, at this point, I look at him and I see a guy with his girlfriend and he definitely looks around the same age as my cousin, but he is a bit shorter than him. He then repeats what he said, but this time around, I say some sarcastic remark or something that clearly he just didn't like because the next thing I see is him getting mad to the point where he's about to walk over to where I'm at and probably beat me up and take my bike. But suddenly his girlfriend stops him and kind of pleads to him and literally has to pull on his arm and walk him away from doing something stupid. And the worst part about it is that I can see based on her reaction that this isn't something new to her. Eventually, after that act of aggression, they eventually walk away. Now, I eventually make it over the curb and I wait for my cousin outside. And thankfully, it's not long before he exits the store. And that's when I see something that honestly blows my mind. As we're leaving, it's the same guy coming up towards us, but this time it's without his girlfriend, with his hood also pulled up just to try and hide his identity. But you know what? I see his face, and I recognize him in all of the same clothing that he's wearing. This guy rides past us on his own bike, but this time I'm not alone, and he focuses on my cousin who's next to me. Now, in my opinion, I think that this guy probably went back to try and finish what he wanted to do, namely to get the bike and try and beat me up in the process. But then he was having second thoughts when seeing my cousin and knowing that if he wanted a fight, he's probably going to lose. Now, from that point on, I didn't bother paying attention to him and we make our way back to my cousin's house with me eventually telling my aunt and grandma about what happened. My aunt, who looks very concerned, says that I shouldn't let anyone stay in the house. And honestly, to this day, I'm still not sure what would have happened if my cousin wasn't with me because I'm willing to bet that this encounter would have been awful. Yeah, that is a scary situation. Can you imagine riding with your older cousin just to go up to the store and maybe get, I don't know, like some sodas or something like that? And then suddenly this guy comes up and he's like, hey, give me your bike. You're too short for it. I should have it. Like, what in the world are you talking about, buddy? I'm not going to give you my bike. It's not even my bike. It's my cousin's. Like, first of all, this guy sucks at being a thief. I mean, who in their right mind would be like, hey, can I steal from you? And then get upset when someone's like, no, idiot, get away from me. And I think the original poster's right. This guy absolutely was coming back without his girlfriend around just so he could rough up the original poster. That's absolutely what was going to happen, but then thankfully he bailed once he saw this cousin riding with this guy. So honestly, good for you for having your cousin to back you up. This seriously could have been a scary situation, and I worry that if your cousin wasn't around, this very easily could have gotten ugly. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. My job has not scheduled me for almost three weeks now, and now I'm at the point where I'm considering filing for unemployment, and overall, I seriously just don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So, I used to enjoy my job at a restaurant, that is, until new management came in. Shortly after, I experienced some very inappropriate treatment from a customer, if you know what I mean. And I'm talking something you absolutely cannot do to somebody when they're trying to do their job, and hopefully you can catch my drift. Now, although the customer was initially talked to, they ended up doing it again, leading to a one-month ban. During this time, I noticed several things. 
things. For starters, my hours were reduced and some of my coworkers seemed to have a problem with me. Also, the only time I had table complaints was when I was oversat and no apologies were given in the slightest. Furthermore, my hours were changed from the morning until the evening without my consent and I faced issues regarding my occasional lateness all because I'm a student and lower managers were very aware that I would be late at times. The general manager brought up lateness and wrote me up even for being one minute late. Now this general manager also suggested I might work better alone after disclosing that I'm autistic even though I had been willing to improve. I only received write-ups for refusing to work on Labor Day despite being aware that most restaurants don't offer time and a half. And not only that but also for being late in the past. These write-ups occurred after the problems I had with the customers and it was all within a month of that customer being banned. And now I haven't been scheduled for almost three weeks and I haven't been informed of my employment status at all. Now here's the thing. I never had any table complaints about me besides the few times they oversat me which of course they wouldn't ever apologize for but would instead just say that I need better time management. And we're talking like eight to ten tables inside and outside the restaurant. Well as I said my hours started getting very awful and they started getting reduced. And when they changed my hours to the evening instead of the morning, it honestly threw me for a loop. I mean, I'm a student who lives in the cities and I was allowed to be late to work, but it's been a conversation between me and my lower manager and he's the only one that understands. But the general manager wasn't aware of this conversation and decided to bring it up anytime I've ever been late since he's worked there, even down to being one minute late, which honestly really shocked me. Now, his excuse is that he brought this up because I was late that day, but I told the manager I have class that gets out very late on some days and it's honestly not not super consistent so it's hard to get here on time. And truly, when this started happening, I was taken by surprise because I've never been told about this. So to be written up for it essentially made me feel a bit attacked. But you know what? I did acknowledge it and I fixed my schedule to try and be more on time. And it just seemed odd to only look at me when other servers are notorious for being 30 minutes late every single day. My worst day was 15 minutes, which isn't an excuse, but all those days I have had a conversation about it. And when it comes to me being autistic, I honestly couldn't believe that they wanted me to work by myself. I disclosed that I was autistic in private and he said to me that I need to communicate better, which I agreed with, and I've tried to work on it. Any issue that is brought up to me, I try to work on. I'm always willing to improve. I honestly think they have some sort of dislike towards me, as I did ask many blunt questions and management found it rude. They thought I was questioning their authority, which is me truly wanting to understand what's going on in any given scenario. I obviously know they're trying to push me out, especially since they were hiring while I was still working there. But I don't want to quit because it's obviously what they want. Honestly, I'm at a loss. I'm not being scheduled at all, but I'm also not being told that I'm fired. It's been almost three weeks now and I'm going to try and file for unemployment because honestly, this is all so sketchy and I now just don't know what to do. It really does seem like your job is trying to push you out. That is so unfortunate. Here they are not even scheduling you for what, three weeks? Like that is so unacceptable. How can you go from working every single week and then all of a sudden not be scheduled for almost a month. Like, I honestly don't blame you for saying, you know what, I'm going to file for unemployment. Like, I do not need this for one second. It also seems like this is a case of retaliation, and I'm not entirely sure about, like, the details about it, but that wouldn't be a bad thing to investigate. Like, they really did decrease your hours and treat you like garbage ever since that one customer was really awful towards you. So with all things considered, I don't blame you for wanting to go for unemployment. These people are not scheduling you properly, and they're honestly treating you like garbage. Garbage. And in my opinion, you do not deserve this in the slightest. Today, I messed up by hooking up with a foreigner who also has a girlfriend. And now I feel completely awful for the other girl. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So for reference, I'm a female first year college student at a coastal college in the eastern United States. I was walking downtown one Friday night with my friends after leaving a music venue drunk when I make eye contact with a guy. But for an abnormally long amount of time, I mean at least 10 seconds. Seconds. I notice that he's cute and perhaps a little too old for me, but I'm a little drunk and I'm feeling bold. So I turn around and I walk up to him. I ask him for a Snapchat because that's the easiest way to talk to someone. And he just mutters to me and says, I'm from Germany though. I tell him that I don't mind and I'd like to get to know him. He says, okay. And we exchange our Snapchat information for a few days. He did not reach out. So I figured that he wasn't interested. So I think to myself, okay, whatever. But he eventually reached out and we began talking frequently. We tell each other all of about each other. And this is where he tells me that he's studying in Germany to be a doctor. He talks about how he's on tour in the United States while also talking about his hopes and dreams and his family. And I do 
do all the same. I start to feel a sense of closeness to him, all before we even met up again. One night, he asked me to hang out with him and his friends before he left for a new city to visit in America, and I happily said yes. However, he is 23, and so are all of his friends, so he suggested bar hopping. Well, long story short, I get my fake ID taken, I get extremely embarrassed, but he decides to come up to my dorm with me. We talk for a while, and things eventually lead to something else if you know what I mean. We end up spending the entire night telling each other so much about our lives and being extremely vulnerable with each other. Well, he had to leave the next morning for his flight, also he could go to the next US city on his list, and that's when he left. At this point, I'm left at home, and I also feel a little sad that it came to an end, but I do feel rather content, realizing that this was a one-night type of thing and I shouldn't become obsessed. I mean, I'm not delusional. I knew that he probably did this kind of stuff with a bunch of girls all the time. He is subjectively a very attractive man, and with that accent, I know other girls ate that up as well. But overall, I was still happy about it. Now, I expected him to not reach out much while he was on tour, and he didn't for a lot of it. But he would occasionally send me pictures of Vegas or San Francisco, or even Hollywood Boulevard, or text and ask how I'm doing. He then told me that he's going to make a detour from his plans and come back to my town to see me. Now, obviously, this is very exciting for me. And I say yes, and we make arrangements for him to come and stay the night. So he flies back to me and comes over. And when he showed up, he greeted me with a necklace that he bought while he was gone. And it's one that matched his own necklace. And he even topped it off by putting the necklace on me. We again talk about our lives in depth. We talk about our future as well as his tour. We ended up staying up until about four in the morning, just talking. And I couldn't tell you everything we discussed, but it was very intimate. And he is an extremely romantic person. Like when we woke up, he watched me get ready, telling me how beautiful I am and how upset he is to have to say goodbye, kissing me in between every step of my morning routine. Right before he left, he pulled me back into bed and told me to never settle for less, that whoever ends up with me is an extremely lucky man and that I'm beautiful, intelligent, funny, and kind. He told me that he wants to one day fly me out to his home and show me where he lives. It was a very sweet moment for me and I started crying because I don't think anyone's ever told me such nice things before in my life. I know though that men will say anything to get to do you know what, but this felt real, at least to some degree. We hug and kiss and tell each other to have a great life and then he walked away. Later that day, he removed me as a friend from his Snapchat. And while I am pretty upset about this, again, I realized that this was not going to be a long-term situation. So eventually, I was okay. I brushed it off as a cool meetup with an awesome person that I was lucky to meet and it was definitely a once-in-a-lifetime person that I'll never forget. This goes on for about a month and neither of us are reaching out at all. Fast forward to last night and some guy adds me by search on Snapchat. And it's not a name I recognize, but I accept it anyways. He sends me a snap and to my shock, it was the German saying that he misses me so much. I then ask him why he's contacting me on a Snapchat of a person's name that isn't his. He then sends me paragraphs explaining that this was a fake Snapchat, that he has a long-term girlfriend back in Germany and they are not doing well and he wasn't sure if he really wanted to be with her. He told me that spending time with me was really great and it was really refreshing for him, but he will never forget me and I was more special to him than I realize, but he doesn't want her to find out, so he will be talking to me on this Snapchat because he doesn't want to lose contact with me. Now, after he told me this, I didn't say much. I just told him that while I do feel the same way, I feel that what he did was wrong and I wasn't sure what to say. He said, I know, sleep well and when you wake up, we will talk about this a little bit more. And seriously, I'm not sure what else there is to talk about. I mean, there is an Atlantic Ocean and a girlfriend dividing us. It's not like we're about to get married, but he was very special to me and I'm ashamed to admit that I do want to talk to him more. I mean, I love the plot. He did block me on Instagram and I can only assume so that his girlfriend can't find out. Now, I will probably stop talking to him and write this off as a crazy thing that happened to me in college, but I am so terribly sad. I feel guilty and terrible for the other girl in Germany, but he was the most memorable person I've ever met. Wow, that guy is super shady. Let me just tell you straight up, that is not someone you want to be in a relationship with. He is clearly okay with cheating on his actual girlfriend, and now he's trying to get with you as some kind of like supplemental of some kind or something like that. I mean, I'm kind of not surprised about why this guy's relationship is falling apart with his girlfriend. Like, look at the way he treats her. He goes off into a foreign country and then sleeps around with another woman just to try and have some kind of fun. And worst of all, he doesn't even feel bad about it. If this guy was a good boyfriend, he would have been like, wow, I messed up and I shouldn't do that ever again. Like, his behavior is so unacceptable, it's seriously not even funny. So sure, you feel bad about helping this guy cheat on his girlfriend, but at least 
piece, you can end it there if you really wanted to. I know if I was in your shoes, I would cut this guy off immediately and be like, no, I'm not going to be around this guy. I'm not even going to entertain talking to this guy. Like, his rationale is insane. So truly, if I was in your shoes, I would move along and not allow anyone to try and make me a side option. This next one came from the Am I the Jerk subreddit. Check the links in the description if you'd like to submit your own story. Today, I found out that my friend got fired from our job simply because she was my friend. And I am now completely stunned and I honestly don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay, for starters, I want to say that every name in this story is going to be fake. During my time at my current job, I've met a girl whose name will be Deanna. She was branded as the champion of the company and was kind of well-liked amongst everyone at work. When me and my work team were seated on specific places, I found an empty seat by chance. Since nobody was using it at all, I went ahead and sat down to start my computer and get working. And as a matter of luck, I was sitting next to Deanna. Her part of the job was to check the metrics among the peers and bring support to whoever needed it. At first, we never interacted because I was kind of unengaged with meeting new people. But one day, I was changing my profile picture on Slack as we were allowed to use whatever names and pictures we wanted as long as we kept it safe for work. And Deanna spotted me switching to a SpongeBob picture and then cracked a reference to the Nature Pants episode. And I turned around and she was looking at me with joy. We ended up talking nonstop about SpongeBob and even ended up singing that Rip Pants song. At this point, we've hit it off. And while we would do our respective jobs, we would chit chat and roll on the floor laughing at our nonsense. Time had passed and we became really close workmates, with Deanna often mentoring me to grow in the ranks of this job. At this point, I'm currently a floor support thanks to her, but suddenly Deanna went missing for several weeks. No trace of her. And when I tried contacting her, I didn't get a response either. Fast forward to February of this year, and we had all our team shuffled on orders from the clients because there was a lot of personal changes. And as a result, I would no longer sit beside her. After weeks of not showing up, she finally came back, but her personality took a turn. She was moody and felt like a shell of what used to be my best work pal. We distanced somewhat, although I still gave her my support if she needed anything. Deanna nodded and we went our separate ways to continue doing our job. Skip to March and I was taking a cigarette break. It was at this point when I was making my way back to the office and Deanna met me directly back with her cheerful attitude, revealing that she was accepted to work somewhere else and hugged me in a fit of joy. I couldn't help but feel happiness and sadness that she was going somewhere better and that she would leave all of us behind. So it goes without saying that this was her two weeks notice and eventually Deanna did leave. Fast forward again the last two weeks and I was doing my work as per usual and supervising my team until I heard some gossip related to Deanna. I was a bit shocked to hear that my pal was dismissed instead of quitting and that's when I chose to investigate further on the matter. Then during one of our days off, I met with another one of my workmates. We'll call her Kelly. So far, she is the one who knows all the gossip within the office. Kelly revealed to me that Deanna indeed was fired. What happened on the spot left me dumbfounded at the time. It turns out that the manager demoted her to a regular agent after finding out that me and Deanna were hanging out together. She wasn't having it. And after falling out with him, Deanna attempted to reason with the manager, but he stated that on the orders of the client, she and several other agents will be laid off at the end of March. At that point, she took several weeks of vacation and returned for her final two weeks. To this day, we have remained good friends, and on our most recent hangouts for Halloween, Deanna revealed to me that she already sued the company for illegal termination. Now, I'm telling you this story during my lunch break because a couple of hours ago, a new manager was announced, and yes, the previous manager absolutely was fired, so I'm assuming that Deanna won her dispute in some kind of way. Wow, what an awful reason to let somebody go. Here you have a good work friend who's like there for you and takes care of you. They're mentoring you and helping you grow in the company. And then suddenly some jerk comes along and says, no, you're not allowed to have fun. Like seriously, what is the problem with enjoying yourself at work? It seems like people who suck at their job or who are just managers who just hate having fun. They are the ones who have a problem with other people enjoying themselves. Like seriously, just get off people's backs. There's no reason Deanna and the original poster can't enjoy their time together. They weren't doing anything wrong. They were still getting their work done and they were being productive, but at the same time, they were just choosing to be good friends. Like, seriously, what's wrong with that? And on top of that, it is so cool to see that Deanna sued this company and won. Like, it really goes to show you, if you're gonna fire somebody, it's gotta be for legitimate reasons. And not just because you don't like them, or don't like the fact that they have a friend at work that isn't you. Like, what a petty and weird reason to make someone leave their job. So good for Deanna for not only taking all that vacation time off, but also for getting back at 
this awful workplace because you know what? These people sound absolutely awful and neither she nor the original poster deserve to go through all that turmoil. Thanks for watching. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications so you never miss a video. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some vibey music to put on in the background, check out Easy Mode. If you like Am I the Jerk, check out Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked in the description.